Hello my dear students, welcome to my YouTube channel that's Concepts of Chemistry. So today's topic of lecture is the law of definite proportion. What does law of definite proportion states? It states that when two or more elements combine to form the compound, they always combine in a fixed proportion that is the fixed ratio of their masses. So let me write this thing. The law of definite proportion states that states that when two or more elements combines to form compounds they always combines in definite proportion proportion that is that is fixed ratio of their masses irrespective irrespective of their method of preparation let me take an example for you i am taking an example of carbon dioxide so i am writing three different methods of preparation of carbon dioxide the first one carbon solid plus o2 gas it forms me co2 gas the second method uh, i am having calcium carbonate if I heat the calcium carbonate, it forms me calcium oxide and CO2 gas. The third method can be, let it be combustion of methane gas. It forms me again CO2 gas and the H2O. Let me balance it. It's two and the two. I have written three different methods of preparation of carbon dioxide gas what's common in these three steps obviously it's a preparation of co2 and that is a fixed ratio of their mass is also in co2 now let us calculate what's the fixed ratio of the mass of carbon dioxide let's look over here the atomic weight of carbon is 12 the atomic weight of oxygen is 16 but oxygen are 2 in number that's why we have to multiply 2 by 2 and 16 it comes out to be 32 as 12 let me take in ratio 12 ratio 32 and it comes out to be 3 is to 8 that's the simplest whole number and the fixed ratio of carbon dioxide it will remain it will remain same whatsoever be the method of preparation of carbon dioxide you can also solve this thing in terms of percentage also so what's the again i'm writing co2 gas what's the mass of carbon 12 what's the atomic mass of oxygen it's 16 I have to multiply it with 2 it comes out to be 32 and that's my 12 and I have to add it 12 plus 32 comes out to be 44 that's the net weight of carbon dioxide in terms of atomic mass unit now I have to calculate the percentage of carbon in CO2 how will I calculate it that's 12 uh, I will take like uh, 
atomic mass of carbon divided by molecular mass of complete CO2 into 100. It comes out to be 12. The atomic mass of carbon is 12. What's the molecular mass of CO2 net? It's a 44. It's 12 divided by 44 into 100. So what does it comes out to be? Let me calculate. It's 12 divided by 44 into 100. It comes out to be 27.27%. And that of, that means I'm writing again here, the percentage of carbon in CO2 comes out to be 27.27% and that of percentage of oxygen in CO2 it comes out to be 100 minus 27.27% as maximum percentage is 100 and this thing comes out to be 72.7% so that's my the law of definite proportion it states that when two or more elements combine to form compounds they always combine in definite proportion or that is the fixed ratio of their masses so i have firstly calculated the fixed ratio for co2 it came out to be 3 is to 8 and you can also solve this question in terms of percentage also and i have shown you how to calculate a percentage of an atom in a molecule so CO2 percentage is 27.27%. What does it signify? That in CO2, carbon is 27.27% and the oxygen is 72.72%. So this percentage will also remain same whatever may be the source of carbon dioxide. So you will have the fixed ratio of their masses and also the same percentage of particular atom whatsoever with the method of the preparation of CO2 or any other compound. So hopefully you got the law of definite proportion. So I have written four numericals for today. So let us start with the numericals. Now the first numerical is saying the mass of copper oxide obtained of, obtained by heating 2.16 gram of metallic copper with nitric acid and subsequent ignition was found to be 2.7 gram up to here take it as experiment one so the mass of copper oxide obtained by heating metallic copper means metallic copper means copper solid with nitric acid that's HNO3 it comes out to be copper oxide again solid now he is saying the mass of copper oxide obtained by heating 2.16 gram of metallic copper that's 2.16 gram and subsequent ignition was found to be 2.7 gram the mass of copper oxide is 2.7 gram over here so that's my experiment number one the given condition so let us talk about next thing in another experiment 1.15 gram of copper oxide on reduction okay now i'm writing here experiment number two i'm writing copper oxide upon reduction reduction in reduction we usually add h2 it gonna form me pure copper solid and the h2o in the question he's saying in another experiment 1.15 gram of copper oxide 1.15 gram of copper oxide on reduction yield 0.92 gram of copper here it comes out to be 0.92 gram of copper now this is the given data according to question now he is saying show that data illustrates 
the law of definite proportion i have to prove this thing so for that thing i have to evaluate the ratios in copper oxide so here i'm writing mass of copper oxide that's 2.7 grams next i'm writing mass of copper in copper oxide in my product that's my product i have got all the copper from the reactant only so this much amount of mass of copper is present in this amount so the mass of copper in copper oxide is the 2.16 gram and remaining in 2.7 is the mass of oxygen so i'm writing here mass of oxygen in copper oxide that will be equal to the the mass of copper oxide 2.7 grams the total mass the mass of copper in copper oxide is 2.16 grams and it comes out to be 0.54 gram that's 0.54 grams so let me find the ratio of uh, copper the mass of copper and the mass of oxygen i am writing here the ratio of masses of copper and oxygen in copper oxide what's the mass of copper over here it is 2.16 what's the mass of oxygen over here it's 0.54 how will you solve it next now take it like cross multiplication 2.16 divided by 0.54 ratio 1 this thing comes out to be 4 is to 1 so that's my ratio by mass in the experiment number 1 so now let us calculate for the experiment number 2 in experiment number 2 i am writing again the same way mass of copper oxide what's the mass of copper oxide it's 1.15 gram now here in product i got 0.92 gram of copper which have came from this much amount of mass hopefully you got the got what i'm saying here in the reaction i got 0.92 gram of copper solid from 1.15 gram of copper oxide so i have to evaluate now first of all what i'm mentioning over here uh so is an mass of copper in copper oxide it came out to be 0.92 gram what next the mass of oxygen in copper oxide how will i evaluate it 1.15 minus 0.92 the thing comes out to be 0.23 now again i have to take the ratio in the second case ratio of masses of copper and oxygen in copper oxide what i am writing copper ratio oxygen the mass of copper over here is 0.92 that's 0.9 over here how much i have evaluated for oxygen it's 0.23 so it's 0.23 the same way find the whole number ratio is 0.92 divided by 0.23 ratio 
and this thing again comes out to be 4 is to 1. Now, in both cases, in both cases, that is experiment number 1, I am getting 4 is to 1 ratio by mass and in experiment number 2 also, I am also getting same the 4 is to ratio, 4 ratio 1 by mass. So that means the 4 is to 1 is a fixed ratio for copper oxide. So that means this data, yes, this data illustrates the law of definite proportion. If you get the same ratio of masses in the both experiment, it confirms that the data illustrates the law of definite proportion. So hopefully, my dear students, you got the first numerical, you understood the first numerical. So let us move to the next. Now, in the next numerical, copper sulfate crystals contain 25.45% copper and 36.07% H2O. So let us talk over here. First of all, copper sulfate crystal CuSO4 dot 5 H2O. That's the copper sulfate crystal. And question is saying that this crystal has 25.45% copper. Here, the percentage of copper is given to be 25.45%. So, next, what is saying? If the law of constant composition is true, that means the next experiment which I am going to do in this question will have the same percentage. He is saying again in this question that law of constant composition is true. That is, the data is following the law of constant composition which firstly confirms that the next experiment in this question which I am going to solve will have the same percentage of copper. Now next, calculate the weight of copper required to obtain 40 gram of crystalline copper sulfate. Now, I have to take the, I have to uh, take the copper sulfate, copper sulfate dot 5 H2O and I have to form it 40 grams. So, here the question is asking to calculate the amount of copper required in making 40 gram of CuSO4 dot 5H2O that is copper sulfate crystal. So again the data is obeying the law of definite proportion. So here also copper is present to be 25.45%. So in a very easy manner I have to evaluate. I am writing the mass of copper required will be equal to the 25.45% of 40 grams because I have to form 40 gram of crystal. So it comes out to be 25.45 divided by 100 into 40 and it comes out to be 10.18 Great. So hopefully my dear students you got this question. It was some it was a different question. So hope you got how to solve this type of questions. So let me move to the another numerical. So question number three. In question number three, he is saying question is saying that 6.488 gram hold on here 6.488 gram of lead combined directly with 1.002 gram of O2 to form lead peroxide so what i'm writing here example i'm taking like experiment number 1 the lead combines lead is the symbol of lead is the symbol of lead is Pb. The symbol of lead peroxide is PbO2. Now lead 
combines with oxygen to forming lead peroxide. The question is saying I am having its weight to be 6.488 grams. The weight of oxygen that is combines directly with 1.002 gram of oxygen to form lead peroxide. Now what next is saying? From here I am having the experiment number 2. Experiment number 2. Lead peroxide is also formed by heating lead nitrate. Now uh, let me prove uh, something. I have, means firstly I have to write down the reaction. What's lead nitrate? is PbNO3. Two times. Pb NO3 2. That's lead nitrate. If we heat it in presence of oxygen, it forms me lead oxide. It was now come to back come back to question. It was found that the percentage of oxygen present in lead peroxide was 13.38%. Here the percentage of oxygen was 13.38%. I am writing percentage of oxygen in lead peroxide is equal to 13.38%. Now I have to prove is this data is obeying the law of constant composition. So let us find the percentage of oxygen in the very first experiment. So what's the Total mass of PbO2 what I am getting means I have to add the according to the law of conservation of mass. I have to add the weights of reactants to get the mass of lead peroxide. It comes out to be 7. 49 grams. So that's the mass of lead peroxide. Uh, now I have to evaluate the percentage of oxygen in PbO2. How it how it will be calculated? That's mass of oxygen divided by mass of lead peroxide into 100 was the mass of oxygen is 1.002 is divided by 7.490 into 100 and this thing comes out to be 13. 38% exactly the same as that was present in experiment number 2. So here again I am showing you that the percentage of oxygen is same in the first experiment as well as in second experiment. So it signifies that yes this data is obeying the law of constant composition. Hopefully guys, hopefully my students you understood this numerical. Let me move to the very next numerical. Question number 4 and the last for today. So what does it saying in the fourth numerical? In an experiment uh, 2.4 gram of iron oxide on reduction with hydrogen yield 1.68 gram of iron. Here's up to experiment number 1. I am writing experiment number 1. In an experiment, 2.4 gram of iron oxide. What's the iron oxide? FeO. Let me mark here also the symbol of iron oxide is FeO. On reduction with hydrogen. If I add H2 to it, it forms me H2O 
and the pure iron. Yield 1.68 gram of iron. What's iron? It's Fe. So 2.4 gram of FeO. 2.4 gram of FeO yield 1.68 gram of iron. That's my given condition of experiment number one. Let's come to experiment number two. In another experiment, 2.9 gram of iron oxide, FeO on reduction. H2, it follows me again the same reaction, H2O and the Fe. In an, another experiment, 2.9 gram of iron oxide. 2.9 gram of iron oxide gives 2.03 gram of iron. So this is the given conditions. I have to again prove is this, is this data is obeying the law of definite proportion. So here again, I have to find out the ratios. So here, obviously, what obviously? That this much amount of iron have obviously came from this iron oxide, the weight of this iron oxide. So I'm writing here, mass of FeO given is 2.5. 4 grams the mass of iron in iron oxide it was found out to be 1.68 grams then was the mass of oxygen in iron oxide obviously it will be 2.4 minus 1.68 it comes out to be 0.72 grams so let us calculate the ratio of masses ratio of masses of iron and oxygen in FeO mass of Fe ratio mass of oxygen um, the mass of Fe is 1.68 the mass of oxygen we have calculated is 0.72 now cross multiply 1.68 divided by 0.72 ratio 1 and uh, it comes out to be 1.68 divided by 0 0.72 it's 2.33 ratio 1 that's our ratio we have that's the ratio that we have calculated for Fe ratio O uh, it's my first experiment so that's my ratio that I have got in the experiment number one so again same way calculate we calculate for the second experiment here again the mass of iron oxide it's 2.9 grams now the mass of iron in iron oxide uh, it's 2.03 grams Next, the mass of oxygen in iron oxide. Obviously, it will be the mass of iron oxide minus the mass of iron, 2.03 grams. So, this thing comes out to be 0 0.87 grams. So, now, again, I have to calculate the I'm sorry students for this type of disturbance in audio is the mass of 
iron ratio mass of oxygen what's the mass of iron uh, it's 2.03 ratio what's the mass of oxygen it's 0.87 now 2.03 you know trimmer has 0.87 is to 1 it's called unitary method now it's uh, 2.03 divided by 0.87 again it comes out to be 2.33 ratio 1 that's again iron is to oxygen ratio now just see it my dear students it also comes out to be same that was which was in the first experiment so the ratio of mass of iron and oxygen is 2.33 to 1 in both cases so this data also follows the law of definite proportion so hopefully my student you also got the fourth numerical so my dear students hope you all understood today's lecture i have given my phone number on the thumbnail of this lecture so if any one of you if any one of you students wants to book a paid one to one online class to clear doubts contact me on my phone number so please like subscribe and share my channel to maximum number of students so don't forget to press the subscribe button stay blessed